So I don't know if you'll remember this. Okay. But the last time that you and I were in a car together, we were flying from Cleveland to LA. Yes. I was going we were to Beverly interview. Hills. Yeah, I was going to interview we the guys Hills. from Monday Night Football. You were going to be on Jim Rome show. Yes. And Universal NBC did mm-hmm. not give me a car, but Jim Rome did give you oh, a yes, car, car and you that. gave me a yes, lift. Yes. Which was the nicest thing. Yes. I know you were so kind. Well, um, thank you. Was, yeah, was, I was on your show a bunch of times, so I was like, I couldn't leave you there. And you were, I remember you had your phone. You was like, Oh, okay, I'm good. I'm like, you know what? Come on with me. You know, it I'm was sure the nicest thing you, because you didn't. Yeah. I mean, you knew me, but you didn't know me well. I mean, we've become friends since then, but it right. wasn't like we were close friends then. And you gave me a lift to the hotel, which was a totally different hotel than where you were staying. It was right, so nice right. of you. Well, Cleveland. I know, you right? Know, what, we, you know, we, we do feel connected that exactly, way. Exactly. Exactly. Was that at the time sort of the beginning of when you were starting to do radio and broadcast and you know, trying your hand at a little of that? A bit yes. More? Also acting as well. That was like when it all started. Like I started going out to LA like really rapidly, like getting real familiar with it and um, end up being on the league on FX and and hot in Cleveland, Betty White. I remember that. And um, going out there shooting commercials and being on NFL Network. So that's where it kind of, you know, you caught me like at the early stage. I actually had more practice on your show than anywhere. Like that gave me like the, you know, the confidence to be in front of, the, you know, being in front of the camera and knowing I can do this. Like I can do this. And which was a perfect way, like if you're doing local television, mm-hmm. it's a way to sort of like iron out the kinks. Right. You know, they say the cliche of get your feet wet, but yes. really it's a place where you can make some mistakes and go back and watch yourself and figure out what you would exactly. do differently. And I don't feel like, you know, I don't want to knock local television, like, because it was real. Like, you're almost more, um, you know, apt to to you know mess up on you know local television and national because those are the people who are, the people who are watching the people you see every day so yeah. i was more afraid to mess up and local television than national i'm like national i just won't tell nobody if it's on <laughs> but local they're going to see it play over and over and you know everyone watches the news and channel three you know so it's just you know that was you know how i got my feet wet but got more confidence and just you know, being in front of the camera, knowing that I have the ability to speak, you know, well, intelligently and, and to just, uh, you know, you know, get it under my belt. Like I, I wanted to like increase my resume. So I did, I put that on my resume. Like, yeah, I've been on channel three, like check me out on there. Sure. NBC I would, Cleveland. Right. 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 I, I would <laughs> film it, tape it, TiVo it and send it. Cause you know, even when, um, you know, you know, this, you have a reel. You yeah. know, when you want to be on NFL Network or ESPN or any any station or broad, broadcasting station network, you have a real, you know, you uh, it's your resume. Yeah. It's, that's your resume. You yeah. guys wrote my resume. I love it. So. I think that's so cool. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, when you think back to, like, days at Kent State, would you have even imagined yourself doing some of the things that you ended up doing, like acting with Betty White? Never. On Hot in Cleveland? Never, never, never. Like, I couldn't even imagine, you know, being in Ohio. Like, I, you know, the reason why I ended up at Kent State, I'm from D.C., and um, I played at St. Ignatius. We had a game against St. Ignatius, mm-hmm. and we practiced at Kent State. So I never thought, you know, when I was a kid, I'm like, man, this you know, wow, the whole town shuts down for this school, like this private school, St. Ignatius. And I was just wondering, I'm like, wow, I never, I'm looking around the sites and everything, like, wow, it's Ohio, okay. It was just, you know, a, a blur. And to actually end up out here and, you know, I, I end up, you know, coming to, going to Kent State, getting my wife, and I never could imagine that would have took me to LA, yeah. <laughs> NFL Network, NFL for that matter. I never... Of course you wanted that. Of course that was the end goal. But it was more fantasy than anything. It was more like, it's not going to happen. But just in case, I'm going to do the work necessary, right. you know, to allow the opportunity to happen. You know, and I couldn't imagine it. You know, so when I was going through it, I've always, I love living in the moment. You know, just like taking, sitting back and taking it all in, you know, in the moment. You know, it's nothing like living in the moment. I never thought I could have that. I think it's cool that you understand the 
that living in the moment concept, right? right? right. Cause sometimes like we live such fast paced lives and especially with everything that's happening on social media, you know, like right, always on our right. phones, always trying yes. to get the picture, record the oh, video man. rather than just like digesting what's mm-hmm. happening. Mm-hmm. So it's cool that you were able to do that. What I wonder for you, Josh, was there a period of your life where you were considered an underdog? Oh yeah. I feel like I've been the underdog, you know, my, you know, even from high school, going to Kent State, because when I got into the, got to the Browns, you know, every reporter was like, why you choose Kent State? Like, why did you go to Kent State? I'm like, I feel like if you're good, you could, you could be seen anywhere and, and you would sh- shine through and they would find you. And that's how I got found. And with the Browns, we were the dogs <laughs> and we were the underdogs <laughs> playing every single game. You know, we, everyone, everyone, you know, everyone was against us and, the, you know, every team was, you know, ranked above us. So anytime we won, it was like a great thing because we always were the under th- underdogs. It was, wasn't drafted, came in. I used to boast coming in through the back, through, through the back door. And that's what gave me that, you know, that drive, that niche, that, you know, chip on my shoulder to, to prove that I belonged in the NFL with, and playing with some of the greatest athletes becoming one of them because uh yes because let's talk about that so undrafted free agent 2005 right then you start tying and breaking records 100 yards wait and, and this is the second time so kick it away and and this is the second the in the same game the i broke Quick my own record to yards, score the eighth Piece touchdown the to, to get the nfl He's record from myself <laughs> He's to the 20. He's to the 30. He's to the 35, 40, and he runs by them again. Here comes Grant. Do you get chills? 20, 20, I do. I want to live in that 10, moment. Five touchdowns. I, 102 I, yards to go along with a 100 yarder earlier in the day. Read into does the it ball. Make you emotional? He lines it down it the does, field. Like, it bounces. And Chris had it bounce off him. That's a lot of ball. Look at you. Back by the goal line. He's got to come out with it. He's to the five. He angles. He's up the sideline. He's still running. I think I'm He's to the 20, 25, 30. hear Jim Donovan get excited right, like that right. because you know there's not a lot he has to really work hard to get excited now for yeah, some plays yeah, um, I know which we can get to that or not get to it but your time I mean that has to make you feel so proud it does I you know I feel like you know looking at it I'm like wow like I did that like I did that and even game by game, when I would have success, I would look back like, how did I do that? You know, and I would want to recapture that. Before each game, I would kind of sit on the on the bench, you know, after warming up a little bit and, and kind of visualize myself returning kicks and visualize the, the blockers in front of me and, and moving a certain way, the defenders and me getting past. I would visualize success. And then go out there and do it, or at least attempt to. Um, one thing that I do, and and I and I, you know, try to talk to a lot of the, you know, the athletes, the younger athletes that, that come in the league, is to be able to look themselves in a, in a mirror before the game and after the game, to just look themselves and be truthful with themselves and say, I'm gonna do everything I can in my power to help this team win a game. And it's not, it doesn't matter if you make a mistake, because that mistakes happen. But doing everything in your power, like I'm gonna leave it all on the field. I'm not gonna be scared. I'm not gonna be fearful. I'm gonna totally own my ability and do everything I can and leave it on the field so that at the end of the game, I look myself in the mirror again and I be honest with myself and I say, yes, I left it all on the field, win or lose. And that's how I rededicated myself and stayed true to my craft 
and being the best at returning kicks in the NFL. You use a real interesting word, and that is visualization. And there are a lot who believe in the power of it. In fact, when we uh, were talking to Coach Ty Lu on Driving Cleveland, he talked about um, that season when they won the championship that he used visualization or practice vis- visualization. Um, is it more than just seeing it happen? Is there another element to making it work from just picturing it? So for me, you know, being a kick returner and, and having an opposing team, a defense, I played both sides. So I knew their responsibility. I used to call it counterintelligence. I knew what their responsibility was. I knew that they're going to have a contained guy. They're not supposed to let me get outside. So he, he, he has to stay out there. So no matter what, if I go inside, he's going to stay there because he has to keep the inside contained. So knowing all their positions and their responsibilities went to my favor as well. Because when I weren't when I went certain directions, I knew they would they're supposed to, you know, go a certain way according to their responsibility. So I would watch film, a lot of film on the opponents, so that when I visualize it, I can place the opponents that we're facing that day into my 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 visual, you know, components. I would see them missing me missing the missing the tackles and see me running past the guys and know their weaknesses and know that this guy cheats a little bit he really wants to make the play so he's going to cheat a little bit you know so that kind of worked to my advantage and and having vision I mean you can only prepare for so much at some point you got to have the talent to be the best you do (laughs) it's no like no like book or skill that you can just read and acquire you know, at certain, it's a certain level at which you, you know, you have to be capable to be the best. You um, had to, aside from prepare, right, prepare and practice and mm-hmm. have the skill. Mm-hmm. I watch those plays. You're so fast. You break these tackles. Um, and then did you have... Were you surrounded, too, by talent that was blocking really well? Because yes. somehow I'd see moments where i think, how is he not going to go down? <laughs> right. And you didn't go down. One thing, the element that, you know, I don't feel like the team has now is that the guys wanted so much. The blockers on my team, my whole unit, wanted so much for me, me to succeed more than themselves. They didn't – having my name in the paper was having their name in the paper. And – Every touchdown I scored, I would mention like a select few that just gave their all on the play. I would mention these guys by name: Bubba Ventrone, uh, Nick Sorensen. I would just throw that. And and when I had success, when they sent me to the Pro Bowl, I brought them along with me. Not only did I bring the whole uh, you know kickoff return unit, but I also brought the coach as yeah. well. Yeah. You know, so when you have you know guys like that who are play selflessly. You know, anything is possible. It's, football is the biggest team sport. And when all everybody is going in the same direction, that's when you have success. When you don't, you can tell that everybody is for themselves and they're going in different directions. So what's wrong now? I mean, because I feel like it's been a long time. And there, when things don't go right, there can be a lot of finger pointing. Yes. I mean, it is. is it is it that the team needs a new owner is it that they just keep messing up their draft picks is it that there isn't team unity and you and I I mean we both have friends on the team so there are people that we root for I mean we obviously want this team to do well I believe it's more so how young the team is now Mm -hmm. they're the youngest they have been the youngest team in the NFL for the past three seasons yeah very young I mean you know you, you probably will find one or two guys um you know, Joe Thomas being one of them with more than five, over five years of, uh, you know, NFL experience. Right. So when you have a young team like that, who do you go to for leadership in the moment? Well, that guy is on the field. Well, Joe Thomas, he's on the field. On defense, you have like a five-year player, a guy that's four years, four years in the league like Christian Kirksey. Yeah. You know, with not, you know, who's a good talent but not enough experience to lead the whole team based off of his own NFL experience. So you, you have a very young team, and, you know, my advice and, and to the, the organization and, you know, every time I get an opportunity to talk to, you know, Haslam or, you know, Sashi or any of the guys, I, you know, I just tell them to stay the course because the old way didn't work. 
You know, our fanship, the fandom in Cleveland, they're so strong that we demand a winning team now. And it just can't happen that fast. And that forces the organization to, you know, draft the, you know, the number one pick who may not be the best guy to, to pick this guy right now and get rid of the other guy instead of waiting and letting and allowing guys to develop. I think that's what it is. We go through coaches, you know, so quickly in Cleveland. As the quarterback goes, the head coach goes. And, you know, we've been through so many quarterbacks. I mean, they have it's one jersey that has, like, a list of all the quarterbacks we went through. Well, there should be another jersey that lists all the coaches we went through as well. So, I mean, I mean if you were just by showing, like, with length of hands, how big is a playbook, an NFL playbook oh, that man. you got? You know, the yellow pages is, is the easiest thing that I can relate it to, you know. And so it's thick, it's right? It's very thick. And you're – so now – a guy like Joe Thomas, mm-hmm. he's had how many of those that he's had to learn and relearn and relearn? Every year, Every you year. know, and even when I was been in the league, we would change, you know, offenses every year. And and the thing with that is you're cramming all of this knowledge. And the whole dumb job thing, I mean, there's no, this is a different era of football. So you have to be intelligent to be an NFL athlete because there's so much information that's crammed into you into in a short period of time. So we're there in training camp from 7 in the morning to 11 at night, cramming in this knowledge and then going out in the field and doing it. You know, and like I said, a yellow yellow pages, the phone, a phone book, very thick. Mm-hmm. We're cramming all this information in within two weeks, cramming it in. So you've probably seen, since you've seen a lot of players come and go, you've probably seen some go who maybe you thought, Gosh, I mean, that was a great player. Like, if yes. we could have just, like, stuck with it and, you know, continue to build and continue right. to move forward. Well, there's nothing you can do about what's in the past. Right. But let's talk about what we have now because, you know, people start to get a little antsy. Yes. Oh, they stick. Now the coach is going to go. <laughs> the owner's got to go. The quarterback's got to go. We're right. going to get a new this, this, and that. Mm-hmm. Who do you see right now that you think people could get antsy about? And you say you see talent because you're a smart football mind, right, right. and you were a quarterback. Yes, the quarterbacks have to be smart. Yes, definitely. Well, I see that in Deshaun Kaiser. I feel like um, you know, not talking about the past, but if we had a Josh McCown still, and I, I was very sad to see him go, only because of his leadership. When you we were looking for a new quarterback in the draft, and you need a, a leader in the locker room who plays that same position who can teach a Deshaun Kaiser how to be a leader how to you know read defenses from a player perspective how to how to uh, receive coaching you know how to command your team how to act off the field how to take the blame all these things go into being a, a leader on the field and I'm sure he knows this from being a captain and a leader for four years at at Notre Dame but it's very different in the NFL. You get paid for this. So it's, it's no longer for fun. It's no longer, you know, a, a hobby. It's your job. And I, I think that lack, we lack that leadership that, to usher in a Deshaun Kaiser because he did need to sit and under a leader to listen and to learn or to have somebody on the sideline who wasn't, who is not the coach, who, you know, players respond better I don't know why is that, you know, and, 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 you know, some guys do and some guys don't, but a lot of players respond better to other players, other players who've done it before them, and it's, it provides a credibility, and they take it to heart, and they listen to those guys, so that's the guy who, who we're getting antsy with. We're getting antsy with him because he's young, he has the weight of the, the, Cle- of the Cleveland Browns on his shoulder. He's supposed mm-hmm. to be the guy, and, and we put all this on him and say, Go win a team. Go win a game. Go win. Take us to the Super Bowl. And we don't put necessarily put all the right pieces around him to have success. So because the right pieces aren't around him, you would be able to say, we're going to get exactly what we've seen, right? Yes. But with the right pieces around him, what would you liken him to? Like, what could you see happen with uh, Deshaun Kaiser? Oh, I could see us being, you know, right away with pieces 
will be a contender in the AFC North. If you look at the AFC North now, Pittsburgh still there. It was one. If you look at Week Three, everybody lost. Everybody in the AFC lost, and it was it was ripe for uh, the Browns to go in and try to do something at that point, and we couldn't because we didn't have no pieces around Deshaun Kaiser. Our receivers, who are talented guys, they didn't come through for them. Dropped a lot of passes, and they know this. They, they'll tell you, and they're kicking themselves for it. Our guys who post to catch the ball aren't catching the ball. Yes, he's having accuracy issues, but we're not talking about accuracy like, like missing him way behind him or way above his head. We're talking about just slightly behind him where a better athlete will get those balls, will catch those balls, and will make him look good. Those are the athletes that quarterback loves to throw to. And I, I as of when I was a receiver, I'm like, throw me. I don't care if it's in the framework of my body. <laughs> Behind, low, down, I got to catch it. And I'm going to make you look good. And I don't think we have those type of guys around him because they're young. And they, we don't have those guys to make him look good. We have talented running backs. But we don't have elite running backs to make Deshaun Kaiser look good on third and nine and hand the ball off or throw a short screen and they get it. You've seen that. You've seen glimpses in Duke Johnson and, and Isaiah Crowell, but they're young themselves, and they have a long way to go. So you look at the team in whole, as a whole, if they only had intricate veteran leaders all around their team, we would be a different football team altogether. Do you find it difficult to be a fan? Because I'll, I'll tell you this. I mean, I grew up in Cleveland. I mm-hmm. know football Sundays, Brown Sundays were in my home chili soda pop which we were never allowed to drink <laughs> so soda like you pop. know a little <laughs> bit of junk food right. um my mom every time the phone would ring she would answer it by saying go browns and then bark and you know, know my mom but she is not really the ooh, typical ooh, ooh. barker yeah, she's like yeah. you know like she wears like her pearls and is that? lovely but she was they were so into the game so i didn't understand football as a kid but i just knew all the adults got really excited and would right. jump up and down and so there's a for for some that's not lost for others there's a little of that that's lost because mm-hmm. there it's just been like year after year after decade after decade of feeling frustrated do you feel that way now as a fan do you get frustrated i i do get frustrated and i enjoy it because that's what fandom is all about that's what makes cleveland browns bar none the best fan base because we don't win and we still have a great and a huge fan base and yes it's tough to cheer for a team that doesn't win but it it sets you apart from the rest it's easy to cheer for a team that wins every game, that goes to the Super Bowl every year. I mean, they pick up fans in every state. I remember as a kid, I was a Chicago Bulls fan because Michael Jordan played, and they went to the championship every year. I mean, you look at LeBron, he was a Cowboys fan because they used to beat the Redskins, and they used to win Super Bowls. And he was a Yankees fan because everybody loved the Yankees. They used to win. It's easy to cheer for teams that win. But when when you have a fan base that's secure and, and solid, and you don't win, that's how you know. And that's how you can tell we have the greatest fan band. And I love it. I mean, win or lose, I just want to see that progress. I want to see that the players are giving 100% effort. Because in Cleveland, man, you got blue-collar workers. They work hard for what they earn. The, the players have to reflect them. They have to work hard and earn those wins. And if they don't win, we got to see that they left it all on the field. Anytime I need a motivation, I just go talk to a fan. I just go stop at on the way to the game. I'll stop past the tailgate and look at all the fans out there early in the morning with coats on in the cold, rooting for us in in the rain. And because that's what it, you, you get a lot of in Cleveland, a lot of rain, yeah. cold. I would love that because the fans would be out there right with us, and that's how I got motiv- most of my motivation to do it. It's from the fans. So You're now so I see cool them. that way, yes. though. You're very approachable. <laughs> and you. by the way, I mean, you are more recognizable than a lot of the guys who even currently are on the team. So fans know you. I don't, I mean, I know the hair is a little bit yeah, of a giveaway. It gives it away, yeah. <laughs> but it's like cheers. You love to go where everybody knows your name. So yeah. when, when people say like, oh, man, you're going back to D.C. or you're going to a warmer climate, I'm not like, no, I'm staying right here in Cleveland where I'm raising my family. My kids love their schools. They love their friends. I love the people. And, and it's it's such a, a warming uh, feeling to, to, to go to the gas station, be pumping gas, 
and a, a fan come up to you and be like, man, thank you for all you've done. And man, I really appreciate it with some hard times, but you were a bright spot. And to get that confirmation, it, it, it reminds me of all the hard work that I put in to get that. So I, I, I'm excited to hear that. And, and you know, I, I love it. And, you know, I'm, I'm like, man, I, yeah, I must have been pretty good. You know, you, not <laughs> only were you excellent, I mean, three time Pro Bowler, right. <laughs> breaking records, but, and this is the even bigger thing, you're not originally from here but you endeared yourself by yes. making this your home you chose to come back you've chosen to stay you chose you've played for other teams right and sure the browns were the team that you played for the longest but mm -hmm. you chose to continue to root for this team and support yes. this team cleveland clevelanders love loyal people yes. who yes, love their do. city yes they do and i'm you know i'm loyal to the city you know, to the fans, to, you know, the, uh, the workers of the city. You know, I have a great relationship with the police force here, our police chief in Cleveland. My father was a police officer. And it's just, even when I left here and went to a different team, I got homesick from Cleveland. Like, I was like, wow, like, I miss Cleveland. Like, I'm literally sick being, I was in L.A. and in Oakland and San Francisco. I'm like, I'm sick. I need to go back to Cleveland. Like, it's, it's we don't boast skyscrapers and this and that we both are the relationships the people the 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 everyday life living in cleveland is what we boast you know let alone you know that cleveland was on the rise let alone we have the football hall of fame the the uh rock and roll hall of fame and and the, and the city is is, is is rising attention with the Cavs and the indians but everyone because of that is seeing how great the city is and the people is for that matter